Yeah, hello everybody. Today, this is Paula Kingsley. I want to talk about devil. Why devil is a liar? How devil de deceive the minds of believers, and also keep those who are not believing to stay where they are. Okay. So the message today is about devil is a real enemy that you have. Me and you, we are not enemy. Devil is your real enemy. Okay. Now you look at the photos they show about devil. Don't even look at that. Okay. Devil is a real person, and most people love at the devil. Most people laugh at him. Most people criticize him. But guess what? The goal of the devil is to do what? Is to divide me and to divide you and to draw us away from God. That is the goal of the devil. Have you looked in the book of John 10, 10? The Bible says what? He's a thief. He comes to do what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. You see? So today in my life, in your life, we need to take devil seriously, okay? Because he is the one who deceived our first parents in the Garden of Eden, okay? And that is how devil is smart, okay? Apostle Paul says, reference devil, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30, he said, well, But I am afraid that a serpent deceived Eve by his cunning and your thought will be led astray from the sincere and the pure devotion of Christ. You see? So devil is the one that moving people away from God. Okay? Devil is a deceiver. Devil is a liar. In fact, Jesus Christ calls him a liar. He is a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in the devil. When he speaks, he lies. And that is his native language and that is his character he is a liar he is the father of all lies in the book of john 8 44 that's what just christ how he described the devil you see so now when someone do not start behaving like a devil you can say okay he's acting like one because if he continue lying so that means pretty much you have already been deceived okay now today let's have a look at the book of romans chapter 8 verse 5 to actually for us to understand how devil is dangerous in my life in your life that goes to the believers and that goes to the unbelievers okay this is romans chapter 8 verse 5 you say those who live according to the french you know what fresh means it means that you are living your life in sin so fresh represents what sin probably you haven't trusted Christ you haven't believed haven't taken Christ as your Savior in your life and you are living what according to flesh and and they set their minds on the things of flesh you see flesh give birth to flesh that is why you see people commit one crime from another crime to one another okay and that's what flesh does okay so if you set your mind today on the things of the earth that means you are living what you are living in sin and flesh represent what sin that is a key point okay and those who set their minds so what apostle paul is talking like this why is he saying these things to me and to you is because when you look at flesh it's not like the flesh that you are looking at that i have it's not like your blood and your bone but guess what it represents those who are opposing the word of god that is what flesh represents he opposes the word of god and that is why the bible tells me and you the word of god and the flesh always have a conflict they never agree and that is why fresh is coming in word of god is coming in they always never agree look at your life look at your family look at your friends if you bring word of god to them you will start having a conflict with them that's what fresh does you see and that is why spirit and flesh they never go together remember when christ find the disciples they were sleeping because their flesh was weak even though their spirit was willing and that is why apostle paul is telling me are you flesh always opposing the word of god that is the key point so when you hear the word flesh just remember it is a sin and sin always opposing the righteousness of god and that is the key point here me and you need to grasp into a game and apostle paul also says that the flesh give birth to flesh but those who are living by the spirit guess what you are having the holy spirit living in you so that means you set your mind on the things of the spirit you see so listen and pay attention the mind that is devil our mind is a devil playing ground 
devil is playing with our mind. Everything good there in my life, in your life, to make sure to do what we do not obey the word of God. And that is how devil starts, okay? It didn't just get only your mind. It goes from your mind to your leg. It doesn't get your toe. The Bible says it gets full hold of you. And that is why many people remain what remain in sin. Okay, Romans chapter eight verse six say for the for the set mind of flesh is what is what the devil wants you to do, and it leads us to what it leads us to death. But to send the mind of the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, is what is life and peace. The, because the mind that set on flesh is hostile to God. Just think about it for a moment. If you set your mind to flesh. Is hotter to God, and that is why the Bible tells me in the book of James that if you automatically decide to live a worldly life, you are automatically an enemy of God, okay? Because there is a conflict of interest, okay? God cannot tolerate my sin, God cannot tolerate your sin, and that is the key point here. And that is why the flesh represents hostile to God, okay? But the spirit represents what. God, because the Bible says God is His Spirit, and those that serve Him must serve Him what in truth and in spirit. Okay, Romans chapter eight verse seven says, "For the mind that is set on flesh is hostile to God, and do not submit to God's law." What is God's law? God authority, God law of order. You see, Ten Commandment is not ten negotiations. You cannot negotiate with God. Ten Commandment means that shall do this. There's no any middle ground with God, you see? And that is why the Apostle Paul say, indeed, it cannot obey God's law. Because the mind that is set on the things of flesh is what? It's being controlled by devil, you see? So how can you want God to control you and at the same time devil is controlling you? And that is why they're always having like conflict. And that is why I say yesterday, I want to comply. I want to comply to the word of God instead of being defiant, you see? And that is why Apostle Paul said, those who are in flesh cannot please God. That reminds me in the book of Hebrew, 11 verse 6, he said what? If you don't have faith in God, it is impossible to please God because God only reward those that trust him. You see, and that is the point here, okay? Apostle Paul is saying the same thing here in Romans, okay? You, however, are not in flesh, but in spirit. In fact, the spirit of God dwells in me and dwells in you, that you are trusted. Why is it that spirit of God dwells in me? Because we as a child of God have Christ as our Savior, and that is why Christ is the ownership of my life in your life, okay? Because he rules and he reigns in my life, and he makes us to do what? to obey God and not to disobey God, you see. So today, what are the voices are you going to hear when in, in the crossroad to choose whether to obey God or to obey devil? That's going to be your own personal decision. But I am here to do what, to encourage you to what, to listen to the word of God and act upon it because your flesh will continue deceiving you. And that is why you have so much problem in the society. You have so much crime in the society because we are people are still disobeying God, you see? So me and you need to get our mindset right, okay? Now, let us have a look at this as well. If you call yourself a Christian, or maybe you grew up in a Christian home, or maybe you grew up, it doesn't actually mean that you are a Christian. To be a Christian is to do what? Is to put your faith on the finished work of Jesus Christ, you see? And that is why the devil keep on deceiving people today. Even till today, people think maybe because they have done the baptism, they have taken the communion, they have taken the Holy Communion, that makes them a Christian. No. It is a relationship between you and, and God, you see? So me and you we can never be complete. Only one will have Christ in us. Amen. So what what are what are the primary work of devil? Let's have a look in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. What what an uh, apostle Paul says in this case, he said, In this case, the God of this world, that means the small g God of this world, has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God. So there's a veil that covers the eyes of those who are not believing. Now you know why. It's the devil. The small g God is what controlling the mind of unbelievers not to accept the gospel news of Jesus Christ. And that is why the devil is called a liar. He's the source of lying. 
from the Garden of Eden is still lying for a long time ago. And that is why the Bible tells me and you, anyone who listens to the lie of the devil, the devil is misleading them and causing them to do what? To distrust, to not to trust the Almighty God. You see? So the truth of the matter is this. Any mind that is being set on the devil is what? Is disobeying God. And our mind is the battleground, is the battlefield where the devil is fighting. You see? Forget about your flesh. Forget about everything that you have. It's your mind. If the devil can control your mind, it's automatically doing what? Control you. And that is why so many people today go astray. For not actually understanding the word of God again. Okay? But me and you have this advantage today, okay? We have this advantage because we have the word of God to back us up, okay? You see? We have the word of God to fortify us. We have the word of God to lead us so that we can do what? Obey God, okay? Now, let's also look. Who reminds, who reminds you see what they have done? You as a believer, do you know that even though you are a child of God, guess what? Your mind is still a battleground. You see, watch this. Living in sin as a believer, yes. Disobeying God as a believer, yes. Suffering from the consequences of living in sin and disobeying God, yes. You see, so even though you are a believer, it does not stop God from doing what? You facing the consequences of your sin, okay? You remember when, like, when they will come and lies to convince people to disobey God? Guess what? It started happening in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3. We know what the devil said to, to Eve. Did God actually tell you that you're going to die? Eve said yes, and the devil said no, you will not surely die. It just preventing you to do what? So you don't get the knowledge. Because the food was so enticing in the eyes of Eve. Eve ate it. Guess what happened? Adam also ate it. So he got these three people. Devil number one, he got Eve number two, he got Adam number three. All of them received the pen, pen, uh, punishment for their sin, the penalty for their sin. You see, devil was being told that he's being caused, he's going to move with his belly and crawl and eat dust for the rest of his life. That was his punishment. Eve also received her punishment. She's going to have increase in childbearing, in pain when she gave birth. And that is why when, when the women today go into labor, now you know the cause. What about the men? Adam received his own, guess what? You have to sweat to make ends meet, to bring bacon home, to bring bread to your home. You have to sweat. You have to go to work to do what? To make money. So as you can see, devil have different kind of bag of traits. He tricking people. He deceiving people. And he operate only what? In your heart desire, in your mind, in what you need and in what you want. And that is why even though Adam and Eve have everything in the Garden of Eden, they have life, the tree of life was there, they have food, they have everything. They were lacking nothing. Guess what they were lacking? Only the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, which God was preventing them not to do what? To eat it. There was a reason behind why God was preventing them not to do that, okay? So devil is a liar. The Bible calls him, he's a deceiver. He's an unemployed cherubim, you see. So he knows how to entice people to, to do the opposite thing God tell them not to do, you see. So let us get this wisdom today, okay. To know that anytime that you are missing something in your life, guess what? Don't believe that thing that you are missing. What you are missing in your life is Christ Jesus. We can never be complete. You see, in this life, God built us in a way whereby each one of us have to miss one thing. You can see some people they're missing, they're missing something in their life, but guess what? They cannot figure it out because the devil is still deceiving them. Only when they come to realize that what they're missing is Christ Jesus, and that is why me and you need to stand firm on what you believe. Even the devil always try to tempt people when they're vulnerable. Christ Jesus Christ, after fasting for 40 and 49, I was tempted three times by the devil. They were even telling him to turn the bread, to turn the stone to bread so that he can eat and satisfy. Do you know that if Jesus Christ had done that, he could have missed all his purpose in his life? He could have missed the mission that he came to do to accomplish, to set me and you free. But guess what? He didn't fall for it. And that is why I'm here today to tell you what. Do not fall for the devil. Okay? Because when you are hungry, you know the hungry man is an angry man. 
when you when you are angry you're emotional involved your feelings devil is gonna use advantage of it when you are vulnerable emotionally done frustrated devil is ready to create all this thought that in your mind for you not to believe the word of god you see so today the scripture from the genesis to revelation i believe every single word i don't pick and choose and that is the key thing here people don't pick and choose because the word of god from genesis to revelation the holy bible is what the promises that is there is what is yes and amen in christ jesus amen so we need to believe that don't let devil steal that word of god from you the bible tells me and you that he come to do what is to kill to steal and to destroy so if you let him to see the word of god that means you have missed the first step because his first step is to what it will make you to doubt that word of god you see once you doubt the word of god even if you doubt any chapter some people think today the word of god is not relevant that's the devil deceiving them me and you know that jesus never changed the word of god yesterday today and forever it stay the same for the bible said the, the heaven and shall pass away but his word will remain do you know why his word his himself it's like me i give you my word if i change it that means i'm nobody anymore to you and that is why we need to keep our word you see when you come to christ you remain in him don't go back to the word okay the bible tells me uh, you will be enticed the book of james chapter one verse 13, like 13 say, let no one say he's been tempted or being tempted by God. For God cannot tempt us with evil, but each one of us has been tempted by our desires. Anything that enticing you is it could be your eyes, it could be your ears, it could be it could be anything that you emotionally involve, and that is when you've been tested been tempted okay so my question to you today what are you going to believe are you gonna believe jesus christ or are you gonna believe devil that is a choice you need to make in your life today and i pray that you believe god because the word of god is yes and amen the word of god is valid today the bible tells me the word of god is active shepherd and two so that pierce into every heart and souls and marrow and that is why i'm here today to do what to encourage you for you to remember what to remain with god because in his word is what is spirit and life you can't get it anywhere else you see so if anybody tell you any gospel other than the gospel of jesus christ i would say never let that person inside your house as a child of god don't mingle with the person don't share any sin you see so the word of god is what is going to keep me and you alive now adam and eve make the biggest mistake because if they didn't eat that food and of good and evil of that knowledge today all of us could have been alive but because they ate it god was preventing them not to get dead that was in garden of eden and it was not activated but only when they disobeyed god they activated that death and that is why today any soul that sin will surely die and the bible tells me in the book of Romans 3 verse 6 verse 23 the wages of sin is death but the goodness is this the gift of life is in christ jesus amen the eternal life and that is why i'm here in this platform and i hope that is where you are listening as women because both of us what you have in common is this bible says fair comment by hearing the word of god so you, you seek it in you believe it and then out of money so that me and you will do or make it into the kingdom of god and i pray that the word of god will touch you i pray that holy spirit will touch you and convince you from your sin because the word of god is going to set me and you free because on that day god is going to judge us he's going to judge us with his word amen and i hope you believe every word that is in the bible remember bless in the mighty name of jesus amen okay see you later goodbye